Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Uh, as we've been told, we are having this professional seminar on the use of ICT in teaching, learning, and research. Just from the last message that we had, we have seen that as a repositioned teacher, we need to be well versed in our subject area. So we're going to be discovering from this seminar the two critical aspects of what makes us to be vast in our subject area. And that is one, the means by which we acquire knowledge through the ICT and also the use of ICT to disseminate the information that we already have. So I want to call on Dr. Stephen Akintude, who is a presenter, and uh, our brother Gray is the repertoire. Please make sure you take note of uh, any question that you have so that it can be uh, attended to. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You are most welcome. We'll continue at this point on the use of ICT for effective kingdom teaching. Today, ICT is all over the place. Whether you are traveling, whether you are walking, whether you are cooking, whatever you are doing, you need ICT. But more importantly, we have discovered that ICT can be put to very good uses. And that's what we want to be able to go further with in this seminar. ICT for education, I want to start by summarizing the main uses. And in this, we are going to have a look at different levels of education. We will look at the secondary, the primary, the tertiary, how they relate to each other. So in this summary, we are going to look at this diagram. I hope you can see it, but I'm going to explain it for those who cannot see it very clearly. Yeah, this is still ICT. <laughs> Now here, we have children in the primary sector. Here we have the tertiary. Here we have the secondary. We have the home. And we are beginning to see that e-learning, electronic learning, which involves blended learning, that is teaching physically as well as using electronic resources like the computers. So this student is under, in front of a computer. We also have this one using the telephone. And they are doing assignments from school. They are connect, connecting at home. This is a home situation for this student. We have a similar situation here that 
in the classroom, they are able to connect to the internet and they are sharing notes. We have the teachers here using connectivity in the higher institutions. This is a tertiary institution structure and you can see the smart board. Today, many institutions are having smart boards. What we mean by smart boards is that instead of the chalk board, instead of the black board, instead of the white board, you have smart board that by touch, you can begin to access resources, make illustrations. So we have all these work together, and at every level of education today, acquisition of skill in ICT is imperative for conducting business and for all we need. Now, having said that, as a summary, we will continue, and one of the things that we will discover soon is this. What does ICT do? ICT captures attention in the class. You can see the students, primary school pupils, they are watching the teacher with the smart board and they have a rapt attention. They have their own systems and they are following instructions. Now, you know, when we went to school, it was a situation like our brother described earlier that until the teacher came around, you could be distracted very easily. But with ICT, you are given an assignment on the system before you and you are following instruction. So one of the things we begin to realize is that ICT makes for attention. It also provides very good interface between the teacher and the learner. It carries both teachers and the learner together. What do you see here? Now, you will notice here, unlike the previous slide, that they have just one system here and a tablet. But we are also realizing that there is collaboration. They are all working together. Because I hear some of us say, okay, this technology, we are in the village. We can't afford the first slide, but you can afford this, even if it is just one tablet. And you are able to grow students, able to work collaboratively. That is another advantage in working with ICT. I have never seen a more dedicated class like this. And you see, every time in an ICT environment, it's like running a race that you cannot win. Because as you try to catch up, it's ahead of you again. So you see these children, it helps them to develop their capacities to expand and to keep exploring. But you see, it must be guided. And that is the more reason why we, as their teachers, must first of all know this. If we don't know it, it means that these children let loose. And probably why some of us are rather carefree about ICT is because the children have gone ahead. They've left us behind, so to say. And we are saying we can't catch up. But we are beginning to see 
at this meeting, we are to be repositioned. In the message last night, we were hearing how the student cannot be greater than the master. And if the master must be ahead, who is the master? You and I, as the teacher. Now, what is ICT? Of course, ICT, as we mentioned here, is an acronym for Information and Communications Technology. And technology we are defining as the application of scientific knowledge and frequently involves invention, that is the creation of a novel object, process, or technique. So ICT itself is not something that is strange, but is something that we've been working with. ICT covers any product, and I want us to listen carefully, any product that we store, retrieve, manipulate, transmit, or information electronically in a digital form. For instance, personal computers, digital television, electronic mail, robots, telephone. Now you want where the what is. When you go online to search for anything, it is robots that have been programmed that crawl and look for materials. So that is that definition of ICT that we have to work with. Any product that we store, we retrieve, manipulate, transmit, or receive ele information electronically. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In other words, God brought into being what was not to the end that he had in mind. So, when you talk of technology today, and our attention is usually drawn towards Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and others like him. We usually ascribe technology to these people. But as we saw in the first definition, that technology is merely the creation of things. And we saw right at the beginning of creation what happened. Technology. Now, when God asked Noah to build an ark, what do you think that was? Technology. God gave the dimensions, he gave the type of material, and everything. When God asked Moses to build tabernacles, and he gave definite instructions and patterns. What was that? Technology, because this thing had never been. So when we are talking of architecture and uh, robotics and anything to enhance whatever we are doing, let us know that the originator is actually God himself. And if God 
originated technology. So I'm free. I'm free to embrace technology. I don't need to have a phobia because if Christ is in me, then greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Many of us are scared because of what we have had people do with ICT, with the technology. But that should not be. We are supposed to subordinate all these. So what we are beginning to understand is that all technological innovations are pursuant of a defined goal, which was hitherto problematic. In other words, if we are going to find solutions to some of the recurrent problems in our educational system, for instance, how do you make trans students to concentrate in class? How do you ensure that people do not copy and paste? They don't plagiarize. This technology can do that, can help you to detect, and can tell you the work that you copied. So, it is important for us to know all so that we can begin to use them for right purposes. Now, we also note here that human interaction becomes meaningful when information is communicated. Otherwise, we will be like robots from what you are seeing here. You can see that these people are asking questions. They are not able to talk to each other. But by the time they are able to communicate, then they will begin to talk. And their communication will be more effective with the use of technology. Because ICT, which is information and communication technology, is actually technology for communicating information. An effective way of communicating information. Next slide. Technology aids communication in the church, in the classroom, in organizations, at home, at work, between individuals, between groups, between organizations. We see many of us are probably rested here because we've been able to call home. I hope we are not getting distracted with our telephones. But it is the same system that we use to register online. Now, there was an instance I needed to travel to the U.S. some time ago. I got my visa to the U.S. I went to the British Embassy in order to collect the visa there because the plane was routed through U.K. Now, after obtaining visa from the U.S. Embassy, I got to that of British. And um, when I got there, I needed only transit visa. Airport side view. I was not going into town. And the British Embassy said, sorry, you don't have sufficient attachment to Nigeria. And we are not sure that you will come back. And I said, ah. What was the meaning of that? London was not my destination. I was going to the U.S. I already had visa for the U.S. And I was only requested to have a visa for transit. Now, it was 48 hours for the trip. And I was wondering, what next? So right there in Abuja, I remember that the National Universities Commission headquarters was there. And I just walked into 
the NUC building. And I asked for the ICT hall. I got there. Somehow they had known me. And I said, please, can you give me a system? And I sent email directly to them in the U.S. That was around 1.30 p.m. Just about this time. That, well, I've gotten my visa. I had received the ticket you sent, but I have been denied visa to the UK. So I might not make the trip. Of course, by that time in the US, they were three, I mean, six hours behind. So they had not woken up. So I sent the mail, I went back to Jaws. On getting to Jaws, around 7 p.m., I opened my mailbox and I got a message that said, Sorry, Stephen, don't worry. We've checked around and we have rebooked you. Here is your e ticket. And you are now having a direct flight to the US. And that was because of the technology that was available. Now, just imagine if I didn't have that opportunity to be able to communicate by email. That meant that all the investment for the trip, I was going there for two months. They had paid all the expenses, their expectations, the flight tickets, and other things will have been lost. But because I took advantage of the technology, within a few hours, they were able to check online to see which other carriers were available. And that was how I got what I now had, the opportunity to be able to go. Next. The Christian teacher, does he need ICT? Yes. We need ICT. And why do we need ICT? Because it's a global phenomenon. What I just said, I was sitting in Nigeria, in Abuja, instead of throwing up, instead of cursing them at the British Embassy, I actually discovered it was a blessing later. You know, the colleagues we traveled with who had to pass through UK, when they were returning, they left the U.S. before me, but I arrived in Nigeria before them. What happened? The British air space was on strike. And they had to stay there for about seven days without food, and they couldn't go out. But through technology, God blessed me. <laughs> so, it's a global phenomenon. Next. And our mandate as Christians is what? Next. To take the gospel to the whole wide world. That means if I could do that for mere official purposes, it means also that whether for ministry, for any other thing, I can also use this technology. And I do not see any other group of persons or individuals that would desire this than the teacher. Actually, the knowledge I have gained over time have been because of this same thing. So if we must be effective, I was here and I communicated across here. And today, you have to communicate all over the place to find out the new lesson plan, whatever that is needed. 
You need to communicate about conferences. You need to discuss real time online. All sorts of things. As Christians, we cannot be ignorant. We cannot claim ignorance. And we cannot say that there is nothing we can do. Now, next. We need it for personal enhancement. Like I said in 2 Timothy 2.15. Will somebody please quickly open to that passage? 2 Timothy 2.15. It's a passage that I love all the time. Second Timothy 2.15. Somebody can help us read this. Amen. Study to show yourself approved of God. In the last message, one resounding emphasis was that Ezra kept learning and learning and learning. He devoted himself to it. And our brother emphasized again that you cannot be effective if you yourself, you are not an effective learner. You are not a ready learner that is ready to embrace whatever technology in order to use it for effective kingdom service. So we need it for research. What you understand today is that research is more global than local. I'm sure during the workshop we'll be dealing with this. So you cannot remain a local champion. Actually, <laughs> even the projects that are written, whether in colleges of education, polytechnic, or the universities, do you know that today they are being uploaded on the internet? Many universities today are being asked to create global visibility for their researches, for their publications, their conference, seminars, workshop proceedings. And it doesn't have to be finished work. As long as it's in a repository, it is so recognized. So your research is more global than local. It provides opportunities for people to make input into your own effort. And they can now collaborate with you. We had one of our staff whose work was uploaded into our institutional repository. That is the database that we upload all works, whether they are research projects, conference papers, ongoing researches. And uh, suddenly he received an invitation. I mean, he asked, he requested to attend a conference in Egypt. Now, when he wrote, it was with the mind of attending this conference and paying for it. But when he wrote, they said, no, we already saw your name. We were actually about reaching out to you. We are going to sponsor you and we will also sponsor you to South Korea. And that was what they did. He was so excited. Now, the other thing about that is that if you are therefore going global. You must also meet global standards of publishing, of researching. And today, you cannot say, because I'm in Boko, and in Boko, there is no internet connectivity. It is difficult for us. So I cannot do We have to do something extra. That is the challenge that we have. And we will see this more. In lesson preparation, it's a similar thing. You must meet international benchmarks. So, 
the notes you prepared, like our brother was asking us, I, are they the notes of 1990-2000? Are they relevant? Do they meet the benchmarks for today's best practices? And then in content development, must reflect current topics in the discipline. There are certain topics, like you see for those in the universities and colleges of education, the governing bodies like the NUC and the National Commission for Colleges of Education, they are beginning to insist that there are certain core courses like ICT, entrepreneurship, and other things. And it's the same thing in content development. If you are not conversant, you will not be able to know how to go about this. Especially in entrepreneurship. It's true that there are opportunities within Nigeria. However, by the time you begin to go around the world to see what others are doing, you will appreciate better how you can tailor your own content for entrepreneurship. Next. So, as a teaching tool, one primary thing is our methodology and practice. And we we'll use the instance of electronic learning. That is learning with the support of technology. Sometimes they said enhanced learning, blended learning. You introduce technology in order to enhance it. And in introducing technology, you are increasing the interaction between the learner and the teacher. Next. Can you go back to the previous slide? Yes. You can see, in order to create a graduate, yeah, even though this is a robot, <laughs> but for e-learning, you need all sorts of gadgets. This to record whatever you are doing, you are saying, in order to transfer it. It's a recording tape, listening piece, uh, camera to take some pictures, and uh, of course, connectivity. Now, I don't want us to get scared that, look, internet connectivity is difficult. We don't even have money to buy modem or bandwidth or whatever. No, no. You are actually on the net. How many of us have cell phones here? Yeah, I think that's a redundant question, isn't it? <laughs> so as long as you have a handset, do you know you are globally relevant? Because your number is keyed into a database that is recognized globally. So you are already part of this network. And that is the end of it. For us, as children of God, what we need to do is to ensure that our learning is no longer localized. It is something that meets best practices. Actually, somebody said, no, there are no best practices uh, because that would be very subjective. But good practices, good, whether it is good or best, you know what I mean. Next. <laughs> E-learning, that is by the time we begin to embrace the use of technology, at whatever level, whether it is just the use of email or 
using computer that does not even have internet connectivity in the class, it leads to flexible learning. Timeless learning environment, global perspective, encourages collaborative learning and is also learner centered. Now, when you talk of flexible learning, it's more asynchronous than synchronous. Now, what do I mean here? <laughs> it's a very simple word. <laughs> okay. Now, sync. That means when you take your telephone and I'm talking to, yes, bro, aha, uh -huh. so what did you say? That is called synchronous communication as it is. Now, this same facility can also communicate asynchronously. In other words, whatever you say, you deposit it there and later it is transmitted. We go back and embrace e-learning. We will learn to digitize our lecture notes. For instance, now that the academic staff of universities are on strike, do you know that much can be accomplished if all, at least if the Christian teachers have their notes, their assignments available on their websites? And is time bound, the submission, the interaction, the discussions, this one, there is no ASU official that will come to intercept or interrupt your communication with your students. Unless they will go and shut down your data center, which they cannot do. And I think this is one wisdom that God is beginning to reveal to us. That turn your notes into digital copies, it even helps us. Just in case of any disaster, you don't have the hard copies. What do you do? But if it's already digitized, there is a tendency that, and possibility that you already have it in your system, is saved elsewhere in a server and all that. You can always go back to it. So maybe this could be one of the outcomes of this summit, that those who don't already have their content digitized. We will go to do this. And for our campuses, we will try to ensure that we have a learning environment that our students can go and we can be communicating. So it will not be after the strike is called off, then everybody will be rushing and be having lectures on Sunday, Saturday, seven days a week. Virtually all schools abroad today, they have embraced this flexible learning environment, including primary schools and kindergarten, just like we saw in that first slide. So it is timeless, and you follow up with your assignment. Of course, it meets international standards, and encourages collaborative learning. Many times, people have asked, okay, if you are working at home, is there no possibility that somebody will just be copying? Yes, the possibility is there, but one of the possibilities, again, with the technology is that you can easily catch a thief. When you plagiarized, there is what we call plagiarism detectives. In many schools abroad, and is being gradually introduced in Nigeria today, before you submit an essay, even your project, the normal class assignment, you have to submit it into the plagiarism detective. They call it turn it in, turn it in, turn it in. It's a software, 
and it tells you you copied so-so percentage. You repeated so-so number of words. These are redundant. And actually, it gives you a tolerable limit. In most schools, it's about 10%. Once you go beyond 10%, it shows that you are not authentic. Maybe that's why some of us are not getting our papers accepted abroad for publication. Because they will not tell you. But once you submit, they just throw it there. And he now says, oh, 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 it's all copy and paste. And we cannot accept this. So, it encourages collaborative learning, global perspective, and it's learner centered. All the while, everything is to ensure that there is a response from the student, from the learner. So, it keeps the two of you working about the same pace. And you are not leaving the door student behind. Because in e-learning, you also give collaborative assignment. We ran a program some time ago, and students in Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, South Africa were paired to do and submit assignments. And the teachers came from Africa, from the US, from Australia, and we were all talking to each other. And it worked. They earned their certificates. And that's what e-learning is. Next. So, when you prepare your e-learning curriculum, there are basic things. And this is across all the tiers of education, whether it's kindergarten, primary, secondary, or tertiary. You identify clearly the aims and objectives of learning. You are compelled to write this out. Not only for your personal consumption. You know, for lesson notes in the past, is closely guarded by the teacher. Isn't it? But this one is available. Actually, e-learning encourages accountability. Then you outline specific objectives. Some instances, they say aims and objectives. Now, an objective is what you, as a teacher, what you want to accomplish. I want to impart this knowledge I want us to be able to carry out this experiment. I want us to be able to do this. I want us to be able to do that. However, after doing that, after imparting the knowledge, what are the outcomes? What are the things, the changes you want to take place? You need to specify this because this now become the measurable instances for your teaching. So, you articulate your learning outcomes, the measurable competencies that will have been accomplished at the end of imparting that your objective. The skills, it involves substance and form. We'll talk a bit more of this, yes? So, you have three major components of learning outcomes. And I think the trained teachers know this very well. The cognitive, that at the end of any lesson we are imparting, even if it is mathematics, the affective, the cognitive, has to do with applied knowledge. The affective, the attitude that should come out then the psychomotor, the practical skills. So we are not just teaching as if we are talking to the air. We are pursuing something. We want to have something at the end of the day. Next. Now, 
The application of knowledge for the improvement of environment has to do with our behavior, the mind, the mood, and the body that at the end of our learning, our environment should be touched. We should not just remain like that. So our learning has to result. Whatever impartation we are having has to result in improving the environment. Next. The attitude that we desire. Of course, in Philippians 2.5, it says that we should seek after the mind of Christ. So we are not leaving the students on their own. In e-learning, we are opportuned to guide our students onto goals that even if they didn't like it at the beginning, at the end of this lesson, this class, this subject, this term, they should have a different attitude. You know, for many of us, we never bother about the attitudes of our students. But by the time we begin to have this technology to apply it, it's one of the stated learning outcomes that we have to put down and will be available on our site for us and for our students. And both of us will be monitoring this together. Next. And the third one is the skills. So we aim at practical skills acquisition. Do you know if only those of us that are here are committed to doing this, we state our objectives very clearly, we state our learning outcomes, and we pursue this, including the knowledge, the attitude, and the preferred skills. Do you know that there will be a change? Or what do you think? There will be. There will be. And it will not become difficult for us to have trained students. Next. In e-learning, there are also teaching and learning strategies. That's your delivery techniques. You are going to write it out very clearly. How you are going to do it, the time, the interface, just like in the past, teachers will say in the tertiary schools that uh, visiting or office hours, so-so hours. Now, if you are going to online, you need to let us know what time you are available. You put your lectures, whether it's going to be presentation or it's going to be an assignment. What other online activities, discussion forums, usually carries a good percentage of the marks. Then course content, you put it there. You put it there. And it's available globally, at least to your students. Now, if in your environment you don't have internet connectivity, no problem, no problem. It's possible for you to have intranet. That's internet work within your organization. You can link up the system. If you don't have that capacity, you can simply copy from one system to the other or in each of the classes, there is a system that you can post this and you and your students can always access this. The good thing again is that the cost of many of these gadgets are going down. So your schedule, course information, lecturer information. All these are needed. You need to state them very clearly, and it's for everyone to see. Next. Now, there are a few websites that are useful. 
and they are here. We have sites for teachers, which is an aggregation of hundreds of education websites. Now, can you click on that? Let's see the first one, if we can get there. You also have TED-Ed, which is a free education website for teachers and learners in all subjects. Its own strength is in educational videos. So you can actually watch, you can listen, and you can practice as a teacher to enhance yourself. Now, great. These sites for teachers, we just went online. You can see even in Boko, we can go online. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, you see educational worksheets for children, free stuff for teachers, that's addition worksheet, base 10 worksheet, clocks, paper airplanes, and paper boats. You know, that's what we learned from. You can even get how to do it better, and you can direct your students here. Then, phone math worksheets. You can make math to be a phone, and this is a free site. Free math worksheets for high school students. That's secondary school now. Then lesson plans for teachers. Say so find best free lesson plans here. Good lesson plan is a bridge between student and teacher. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have an objective of what you want to do, if you don't have an outcome, how will you get there? So you have something here. Then... ABC Teach. This one is 6,000 plus free printables and educational clip art. Now, some of the illustrations that you will need. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to start drawing on your own. All you can do is to go to these free sites. And they are available. Whether you acknowledge the sites or not, they are already established as free. Then, of course, math worksheet again. Teaching resources, all free. Free teaching resources, worksheets, Christmas postcards, and more. Then teacher resources. That's another one. He says, this is more like, uh, like a blog. Get in touch with other teachers through this social network site. Exchange teaching experiences, ideas, and teaching materials with other teachers and students. So you can be in Goku here and... You are online, maybe for just five minutes. And you got the address of somebody who was also online. And you say, uh -huh. please, how do you do this in your own school? And you can be sure that person will respond. And you can, that, that can be the beginning of your interaction. And one day that person will invite you and say, okay, um, since we are doing this together, can you come over to give us the Nigerian experience in India? It's as simple as that. And you are going there, not just to give the Nigerian experience, but the Christ-centered experience. And it goes on and goes on, on and on. Even how to create a teacher website which you can do on your own. You have it here. Next, let's move away from that. So we have this. Uh, there are other sites listed here, but we wouldn't go into them all because of the time constraint we have. Next, the sites continue. We have snow. It's called special needs opportunity window. Now, this particular one, is supported by International Development Research Council of Canada. And what it does is towards inclusive education and accessible technology for physically, emotionally challenged students. Many of us, we have some students who are not responding as we should. And um, we need to take some time to look into their condition. So this website in particular identifies that and they are paying so much to share experience and it's available free 
Then the technology itself for teachers, this is also free. And then teaching with technology, that is also free. I think we need to stop here for now. Um, by God's grace, we will continue tomorrow. So let's take a few responses here. Thank you. Your question, please, quickly. We can use ICT in the nursery classes. So the nursery school teachers do not shy away and relax and just shut down that, okay, they didn't talk about us, so we're not there. Am I clear enough? Because we did a teacher's um, uh, summit like this in Lagos, and I had to take the nursery um, workshop, and we were shocked that a lot of the nursery teachers were not skilled at all. I don't know whether we want to respond to that immediately. Okay. Thank you very much. The nursery school teachers, those resources actually go down to under K, under kindergarten. So the materials are there. Especially that TED education, TED. So many cartoons and such things that uh, kindergartens will want. That's what you find. How to construct. Um, maybe we'll start a ha. That, that's a, you can see that the videos here are cartoons and they are on YouTube. There are so many things you can construct. You can work with those children, those toddlers, and you can do them yourself. You can see this is the type of stuff that they need. So they are actually there and there are resources that you can access. They are freely available and you can make your own. You can also ask questions because it's also a blog. In other words, you can give further insight into how you develop your own and ask questions for somebody to enhance whatever you are doing. Uh, as for the soft copies, please just make sure that your email addresses are available and um, the useful sites, there are so many that we will still come across. Thank you. We will be able to do a little bit more review tomorrow when we tend to have more time. Because our time is past when, can we just bow our head in prayer so that we can move to the next